Uh, this next gentleman, I, uh, I basically said to him, anytime he wants spot on this show, he has it because he has the distinction of being the founder of the comedy open mic here at Amazing Things, what we've now come to call Open Mic 1.0. We are now in 3.0. So uh, uh, it's um, I, I like to refer to him as, as the host emeritus, but he thinks that that's a thing that makes him sound old. I say it makes him sound cool and part of a legacy. So uh, let's bring up um, a gentleman who is always a source of uh, guidance for this show and for a lot of other things, and uh, a man who I'm always happy to introduce, Dave Hornfisher, everybody. You drop your hat. Huh? I'll oh, get it for you. No, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. No, no, All right. Or you can get it. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. I can. I'm used to doing all the work here. I might as well do a little bit here. So I know it's nice to have somebody as a servant here. Gee, that's great. <laughs> I know it. You sure have. Hey, thanks. I'm, yes, he said, as, as he said, I'm Dave 1.0, I guess is the, is the way you might call it at this point. But, you, you know, January 6th, what a great night because this is, you know, some people might call this the 12th day of Christmas, but no, not really. This is the day in which 51% of the people have broken all their New Year's resolutions, okay? Uh, so we're almost over the hump here, but, you know, uh, Kenya talked about that a little bit, but, uh, you know, New Year's resolutions, they're dangerous. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I just haven't had good luck with them over the years. I've, uh, I, I, you know, a couple years ago I tried, uh, I, I said, you know, I was, I was a little overweight, and I said, you know, my resolution this year is that I'm going to lose 40 pounds. So I took a trip to London, and I got pickpocketed. <laughs> Not a lot of currency experts out there, huh? <laughs> okay. So, so the next year I said, well, I, I think I didn't state that quite right. I said, my goal next year is to lose four inches. Off my hairline, you know, that's about, yeah, about four there. I know, you thought it was somewhere else probably, but no, I'm not going there, PG-13. And the, so the third thing, after I'd been doing this comedy show for a while, you know, I was a rookie, guy, kind of getting into it, and I said, uh, I think I'm going to take some comedy lessons, I'm going to get some videos and really work at this. And I spent a lot of money on a comedy series by Bill Cosby. Oh, that's not so, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, you know, New Year's, New Year's is... Are, are we done with the O's? I, uh, <laughs> one more O on that one, I think. Uh, um, but New Year's is really still my very favorite holiday. It's just, uh, you know, it's great. It's one night. You know, you, you get a chance. It starts about 8 o'clock. It's over by when they drop the ball. You have a chance to kiss a few girls, have a few drinks, eat a few shrimp, and you're done. And you're ready for a, for a whole day of football the next day, okay? That's great. But Christmas... Oh, my goodness, it's so long. You know, when does it start? About July 5th? I mean, uh, oh, and it's getting worse every year. But, um, and, and, and the thing about Christmas is it's so complicated now because to be politically correct, you've got to have all these other celebrations. And each one of them has problems. You know, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, that's very nice, I guess, but... Most of my African-American friends still don't even know when it is, okay? And I'm getting some laughs over here on that. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and, and then Hanukkah. Hanukkah, you, you know, it's part of a nice culture, I guess. I'm not Jewish, but, uh, you know, I just can't understand how people could get behind a holiday whose name you can't spell. <laughs> is it Chanukah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, you know? And, uh, and, and, and Ramadan, that, that's another one. That, that's, that's complicated. The only thing I know about Ramadan is it seems every time America wants to bomb an Arab country, it's Ramadan, and we can't do it, you know? But, but yeah, but, you know, but Christmas, despite that, Christmas, you know, has this you know, wonderful religious holiday, and I don't mean to demean it that way, but it's just got so complicated. There's so many Christmas carols. I mean, I, I think I read recently, if you count all the religious ones, there's like 4,000, and there's 75 that are popular ones. And, and there's just so many of them. But, uh, and it keeps getting worse. Now even the politicians are getting into the act with their Christmas carols. I mean, Hillary Clinton, you know, who really wants to be the nutcracker this year. Okay. Uh, you know, no, her, her, her one is Silent Right. Okay. Silent Right. Okay. And, and you know, grumpy old, grumpy old Bernie Sanders is, is Sanders Cross is coming to town. Okay, and the Republicans, there, the Republicans are no better. You know, Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz, I'm dreaming of a right Christmas. 
And, and you know, Donald Trump, uh, do, you hair, do, you, do you hair what I hair? You know, you, know, you know, some of you may know that one. And then, and, then, and then there's poor Jeb Bush. You know, on Christmas Day, you know, he, got, he looked at the polls again, and he said his song was, I'm getting nothing for Christmas. Okay, well, anyways, that's, uh, that's sort of my look at Christmas. And I, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, so, you know, with, with this kind of feeling about Christmas, and maybe I'm just getting to be a grumpy old man, I said, you know, I've really got to go someplace else where there just isn't such a big, big time celebration of Christmas. So, so I had the opportunity, and I took advantage of it, to go to, of all places, this, this, this December, Cuba. You know, communist country, okay? Probably not a lot of it, a lot of religion there. You know, there's, there's a hat. And, and I went with a, uh, with, with a group of seniors who were all in this softball league over in Wayland. And it was the, uh, and it, so it was a senior softball team going to play some, some senior guys down in Cuba. And, and that was great. I mean, you know, you, you like the shirt? I mean, you know, isn't that kind of cool? That's Havana. That's the way they spell Havana in Havana. Something like that. Any, anyway, but uh, so, so we get there, and the most amazing thing that you see are all these old cars from the 50s. I mean, my, my wife and I had a 58 Ford when we were first married, and there was one right on the street. All of a sudden, I'm thinking, wow, I'm, I'm 18 again. And uh, it was great to, see, uh, to, to go to a place where the cars were actually younger than I was. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, you, know, you know, they're, they're, they're riding down the street, and, uh, and, and most of them are still running. In fact, they were running faster than most of us senior softballers. <laughs> uh, but but uh, yeah, Cuba, was, it was really a, really a cool place. The, uh, the water, though, was a little dangerous. You had to be very careful of the water, and most of us managed to eat something that must have had some Cuban water in it. And, and all of a sudden, there was more pollution coming out of us than there were out of the old cars, okay? And, and, and this is true, actually. To, to make matters worse, two of our Cuban hosts had, had nicknames. <laughs> One was called Big Poopy, and the other was Little Poopy. <laughs> that's, that's true. But, uh, but, but, <laughs> but I did, uh, and, and they were great guys, the, the, the Cuban guys that, that, that we played with. We, we've come to know them now for four, about six or seven years. So they've been coming here for four years, and they've stayed at my house, and, and, and it, it's really a nice little fraternity that we have with them. But, uh, but the, uh, I did accomplish one big, I got one more item off that long bucket list that I have, and that was to, uh, to get a few hits in a communist country a communist country that was formerly ruled by mafia guys, and so to get a hit in a communist country was, uh, I thought that was pretty cool, okay? But, uh, but, but yeah, but, but the poor Cubans, uh, you, you know, so many of the Cubans have, have fled to Miami. You know, Miami is now called the 17th province in, in Cuba, which otherwise would have had 16. But, uh, and there was also a fair number of Castro jokes, surprisingly. Uh, that, that, that you'd hear all the time. Even our guide, who was actually technically, I guess, a government employee, he had, he had a few. And uh, one of them went something like this. Castro was giving this speech to about 100,000 people in, in Revolution Square. And uh, he's going, he's droning on. And then all of a sudden, he, he's, he, 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 he hears this, uh, this guy out there, this vendor yelling, Coco y Pina, which is apparently a popular drink from coconut milk and uh, pineapple juice or something. And Castro was a little taken back. The guy was so loud. But, but he kept on for the next 20 minutes or half an hour. And his guy's out back going all the time, Coco y Pina! And Castro's going, and going on again to the third hour. And this guy goes, Coco y Pina! And Castro looks just exasperated. He looks up, will that guy out there who is yelling, Coco y Pina, please stand up so we can kick his ass all the way to... Uh, all, all, all the way to Miami, and at that point, 100,000 people started yelling, Coco y Pina! <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, Cuba was, a, uh, was an interesting place. Uh, we, uh, a, a lot of people, you know, the, the poor Cuban people have actually had it kind of tough, because under Batista and the mafia, who were very involved there, there, there was really a lot of starvation and abject poverty for a long time. And, and that sort of led to the Castro Revolution. And while that improved a few things, there's still a lot of abject poverty and starvation going on. And uh, now we're about to get a little touch of capitalism there. And I, I, I still get the distinct feeling that while they may get internet and McDonald's, there's still going to be a lot of abject poverty and starvation. Uh, that's, that's probably not funny. But Castro, again, and, and, and Castro joke number two here, and there's going to be three. Uh, <laughs> Castro joke number two 
was, uh, was that uh, Castro was, was giving still another speech, which, which I guess he likes to do, and he says, you know, people up north say there's a lot of abject poverty and starvation in, in Cuba. And he says, I just want you people to all know that rarely nobody ever in Cuba goes to bed hungry. And this little Pepito stands up and he says, that was probably the guy with the cocoa y pina. Uh, uh, a little uh, Pepito gets up and he says, but Mr. Castro, I am hungry. And Castro quickly says, so don't go to bed. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, the, the other thing is that uh, <laughs> is the government in Cuba is a little is is certainly not as uh, as democratic or even as republican as, as I guess you might say in this country. But they they have this beautiful Capitol building, and the Capitol building looks a lot like the Capitol in in uh, in, in Washington, big dome, and it, it it's really impressive. Except when you look, there is nothing inside of it. It's all being renovated. It's been being renovated for. 10 or 15 years, I guess, and there still didn't look like there was a lot of workers. So to have a capital with nothing in going on inside of it, in some ways, I guess that's kind of like Washington, isn't it? <laughs> when you get right down to it. But the uh, but the Cuban people, uh, you know, some of them I don't think were too happy when, when Castro replaced Castro. They said, "Gee, that's the same name, you know, replacing somebody. You know, that wouldn't happen in America." Well, wait a minute. We had Adamses, we had Roosevelts, we had Bushes. Who knows? We may even have Clinton. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of the same thing. But uh, I will leave you with uh, with my third uh, my third Castro joke. Is this a Castro joke? Yeah, it is. Uh, um, so so Fidel goes to this school to give a speech, and um, and uh, he says it, to to talk to the students. And after he gets done, he says, "Oh, you know, I'd like to take questions from from all you boys and girls out there." And little Roberto is the first one raises his hand. He says, Mr. Castro, I have one question. Why is it that in Cuba the locals all get paid in pesos and the tourists all use a different kind of currency called a kook, a convertible unit? And he says, that doesn't seem right because it takes a lot of our pesos. We, have to, we, we get 24 pesos for one kook, and so we get paid 24 pesos a day and a soda costs one kook, so we have to use all of our money to buy one soda. And Castro's starting to look at him, and all of a sudden the bell rings. It's recess. And all the kids go flying out in the playground. And Castro, uh, Castro comes, he says, to each, oh, I'd, I'd be glad to come back. Recess is over. I'd be glad to take a few more questions. And says, OK, does anybody have any questions? And little Pepito, Mr. Coco y Pina kid, raises his hand. Yes, Mr. Castro, I have one more question. Where's Roberto? <laughs> OK. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's, that, that, that's enough Cuba and Christmas. I'm Dave Hornfisher, and thanks for coming out. Dave Hornfisher. I figured you'd go over it, Dave. Not, not. Dave Hornfisher, Framingham Limbo Champion. All right.